Hey, this is Chris from Talon Gaming. Welcome back to another video review. This one's brought to you by Remedy Entertainment and 505 Games in August of 2020. Control Ultimate Edition. Control is an award-winning action-adventure, paranatural thriller, single-player game played in the third-person perspective as Jesse Faden, who is looking into the disappearance of her brother and the involvement of the Federal Bureau of Control. Jesse and her brother were exposed to a psychic alien entity 17 years ago, which brought the FBC into their lives. Why did you? As of right now, all the expansion content is actually rolled into the Ultimate Edition, which is the only one you can buy at the moment. Control belongs to the same family of games as the critically acclaimed Alan Wake franchise, if you're familiar with those. System requirements consist of a 4-core CPU, 8 plus gigs of memory, and 42 gigs of storage. A GTX 1060 or greater is recommended, but it will play on much older hardware with limited bells and whistles. If you want to enable ray tracing for some extra eye candy, you'll want at least an RTX 2060. Let's look at some of the main aspects of Control. The game takes place in the oldest house. This is the headquarters for the FBC and is a paranormal, shape-shifting environment under the streets of New York City. While that may make the game seem small, the game environment is surprisingly large, open, and full of detail. Control features a destructible interactive environment. There are TVs, projectors, radios that provide shows, documentaries, how-tos, diaries, and provide a whole lot of backstory. There's knickknacks and devices you can use and manipulate, and most everything from furniture to the building itself is interactive or destructible in some way. Next we're going to look at control points. Control points need to be cleansed before use, and that returns the surrounding environment back to normal. Once cleansed, you can fast travel between control points as well as access board countermeasures, which provide goal-oriented rewards. You'll also be able to access astral constructs to unlock abilities and service weapons and upgrades. After unlocking a certain number of abilities, milestone rewards are enabled, which provide extra weapon or character modification slots. The protagonist is referred to as the hit. Like the sound of poison gas. A paranormal hostile resonance. This is what is infecting and controlling the staff inside the oldest house. Your enemies, such as the agents and SWAT-style forces, as well as aliens with tentacles, invisible flying phoenix, and other beasts. Hedron Resonance Amplifiers, or HRA, protect agents from hostile resonance, the hiss. I won't go into too much detail here, as there's a fair bit of in-game lore to describe the relationship between the hiss, Hedron, an alien entity, and Polaris, an alien psychic entity, which Jess is in contact with and is a source of her powers. Jess relies on both health and energy during the adventure. Both can have their limits raised and regeneration increased by mods and by unlocking abilities. Both can be recharged by killing enemies and coming into close proximity with house drops. Energy affects your capacity to use your abilities, which cause a drain with every use, and then recharges when you should stop for a short period of time. Next we're going to look at puzzles. Puzzles vary in size and complexity from an ocean view motel, which you have to ring the bell a certain amount of times and enter rooms for keys and rearrange furniture and pull a light chain to solve. There's an ashtray maze with shape-shifting rooms, photo matching on computers, key card matching uses a series of whiteboards for clues, and many more. Next, we're going to look at objects of power, abilities, and astral plane challenges. Objects of power are created by so-called altered world events, which is where paranormal forces intrude upon perceived reality. There's one associated with each of your abilities, and not all are required to complete the game. Some are completely optional, can be obtained through side missions. When you first come into contact with an object of power, you're instantly transported to an astral plane challenge. Here you will learn how to use an associated ability, and in order to finish the challenge, you'll need to successfully use the new skill in combat. The service weapon is the first object of power you receive, and the ability to wield it makes you the director of the FBC. It's kind of a weird twist, but it works well in the game. The service weapon comes in several different forms, including grip, a semi-auto pistol, shatter, which is a shotgun, or spin that's fully automatic. Ammunition is unlimited, which is great, and it recharges after every use. You can also upgrade it and attach mods into slots that increase damage or reduce recoil and whatnot. Aside from the service weapon, other objects of power include a floppy disk, a telephone, a safe, a merry-go-round horse, and a few others. Each is responsible for granting an ability, which includes launch, evade, shield, seize, and more. Alright, let's talk graphics. 
textures are of high quality, the lighting and atmosphere of the game feel pretty realistic. The animations in game are top notch. Everything looks and feels very real. You awkward voice recording. Cutscenes are fantastic and lifelike. Although some are rendered in game and dependent on your graphic settings, while others are pre rendered and look far more realistic. I can see you. Sound effects are really good, although I feel often like there isn't a whole lot of variance when dealing with the same effects over and over again. Music is mostly quiet and unobtrusive, but helps build tension and atmosphere. Hello? I should note here that I turned Anyone on the here? option to remove copywritten music, pretty much to avoid offending the YouTube copyright gods. Voice acting is really good for the most part, although I might argue that some characters had far better actors than others. That's a good answer. In the grand scheme of things, I had no real complaints. The story starts off giving you very little to work with and continuously builds throughout the entirety of the game. There truly is a lot to read, listen to, and watch for those looking to fully engage in the story. A complete backstory of the happenings in the oldest house, the experiments, trials, and tribulations of its history are strewn throughout. Whether it be through conversations, audio recordings, projector reels playing, TV shows and diaries, the game is stock full of audio and visual content to supplement the game and its cutscenes. If you look further into the many documents and memos spread throughout the game, you'll see that somebody spent a great deal of time fleshing out the story. Let's move on to gameplay. The standard basic controls felt pretty intuitive, and the added abilities were all within reach using the default key bindings. Despite the relatively low frame rates, the game felt and played extremely smooth with little to no slowdowns, leading to an extremely fun and immersive experience that offered a challenge without being frustrating. The puzzles and game mechanics all felt well sorted, and the natural progression of skills and abilities throughout the game felt very good, and didn't present a large learning curve. I will add here that there felt like there was a distinct lack of information and guidance in relation to the inner workings of the game, the mods, the upgrades, and the like. Keep an eye out in the coming weeks for a video to address some of these needs for new players. The game will likely take you anywhere between 15 and 20 hours if you do any of the side quests to gain all the available abilities. If you do want to experience everything, you might be spending upwards of 40 hours. I'm not sure this is a game you would play several times over, as the story and experience aren't truly really going to vary from play to play. But it might be fun to try and focus your character more on certain skills rather than others during a second go. This game is different. It's not your typical looter shooter, RPG, or action game. What it is is very engaging, fun to play, and has a very interesting story with fantastic visuals. You're in for a fair bit of a mind warp and a pretty deep story. Being in control of Jesse's supernatural abilities is a hell of a lot of fun. If you like the gameplay in the review and in our first impressions video and like to try new things, then give this one a chance. As always, thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content just like this. This is Chris from Talent Gaming, signing out.